what, what the hell am I talking about ABS versus ESP? Of course ESP is better. Yes, it is. But why is it better? What makes it so, so good and what makes it so special? In this video, I will try to explain to you the principles of working of ABS and ESP. As we did on the video about the turbo, uh, today I will not talk about very much about faults, fault codes and problems. I just want to focus on the principles of working of each system. I will try to show you the workings of a simple ABS on the case of my Alpha 155 with, with a very crude ABS, but it works. Um, and then I will show you the more modern Alpha 156 with the traction control in the ESP, the, the, that is the stability program. How does it work? What components make this system? ABS, what it, does it stand for? It stands for anti-locking brakes. Now, the anti-locking brakes, what it does really is to, every time you step on the brake, if the wheels want to lock up, the system will unlock the wheel that is actually trying to lock up. Um, meanwhile, you have to press on the, on the, the brake pedal uh, with enough force to keep the car braking. Because if you take off your, your foot from the, the brake pedal, the car just will uh, continue its journey. Now, the advent of the ABS brakes uh, brought a lot of things to us. One of the things is the ability to have bigger brakes. I already talked about big brakes and on another video, I will leave the description here up top. And uh, there is another subject altogether, but what it does is uh, you have the added risk to lock, to lock your brakes, but as you have the ABS, you now have the possibility to unlock your brakes, okay? So you have bigger braking power without the risk, or so, so high of the risk, of locking your brakes. That is why sometimes you say, I have uh, ABS brakes, they break very well. It is not the ABS that, uh, the ABS that breaks. The bigger brakes that allow it's the ABS that allows for bigger for bigger brakes. That is why your car, your modern car that has ABS, has bigger brakes. Just to summarize here, what does compose the system of the ABS of an uh, initial uh, ABS system? Well, in this case, on the Alpha 155, you have four sensors, one for each wheel. You have a, a sensor or a, a switch on the brake pedal. Uh, and that's it. You on, on the on the, the ABS unit, you have the positive and negative. You have the signal for the, the clutch pedal. The sorry, the I think clutch pedal, the brake pedal. Um, and that's it. Now, when you are not applying, or when when the ABS does not enter, when you are braking, the ABS really does nothing. It does not interfere at all with your braking. Only when one of the wheels is spinning uh, slower than the other three or two, you have uh, the actuation of the ABS. About the maintenance of the ABS, um, I already, already talked about this a million times, but you have to change the brake fluid. Uh, every two years or 40,000 kilometers, or if you live on a, a, a island or a place where you have a lot of, of humidity, it is one year or 20,000 kilometers. On the modern ABS units in the SP, with a diagnosis machine, you have a procedure that says purge. That's, that allows you to open some uh, the, the valves that normally are closed when you are braking normally. When you are purging the brake system normally with uh, the pressure machine or the vacuum or, your pe or the pedal, uh, the, one of the three ways or more ways, th those valves are always open, okay? When the, the ABS actuates, the valves, uh, some valves open, some, some valves close, let, let, let's, let's not talk, talk about that much for now. Uh, and the purge with a diagnosis computer allows you to open those valves to take out the oil, old oil, the old braking fluid. Like I said, the braking fluid is hygroscopic. Oh, 
hygroscopic, I'm sorry. It absorbs the humidity of the air. If you have humidity inside your ABS unit and ABS um, block, what do you have? A broken ABS. That is why it's so crucial to do the simple maintenance of the braking fluid. It saves you so much things. The ABS unit, the mesen cylinder, the, the brake cylinders, the, the, the calipers, the hoses, the so many things, so many things. And yet nobody, or not nobody, but so, so few people know about this. On the first systems of the ABS, you still have some components of the old uh, assemblies. Namely, on this car, for example, I still have the regulator for the, the second axle, for the rear wheels. As I am braking, the weight of the car goes forward, okay? If I still have the same percentage of braking power on the rear, as soon as my weight goes forward, my rear wheels run the risk of uh, locking up, okay? And uh, still not... That the, the first uh, ABS systems are not capable enough to take out so much uh, braking power. So the regulator is still there um, and is still one of the things that you have to pay attention when making the maintenance. Uh, it's one of the things that can leak and is extremely expensive and hard to find. On the ESP systems, it's the, the, the ESP itself that does the regulation for the, the rear axle. But Let's go see that now. So here on the Alpha 155, I hope you understand my, uh, my explanation, my view of uh, seeing things, of explaining things. Leave the comment below and I will answer you as soon as possible. Now, on the Alpha 156, uh, this car has 15, 16 years, but it is quite um, up to date. Uh, this system, this ESP uh, ABS system is quite um quite good actually and it it it, it is really up to standard even on today today's cars so i as i was saying here on the alpha 155 we have a regulator a mechanical regulator on the back brakes there when you brake the weight goes goes forward and the rear gets lighter so you do you need uh, less brakes unless unless you you don't have that the rear, rear brakes, the rear wheels, will lock up. On the Alpha 156, you don't have that. Yet, I don't know if you noticed that, but the rear axle has no uh, regulator for the brakes. I have regulators on my Alpha 75, on my 33, or thing over there. But on the Alpha 156, no deal, okay? So how does this, how does this work? How does the car knows how much to take out on the braking of the rear wheels. Well, this car has a gyroscope. What the hell is a gyroscope? Uh, maybe you remember that on the airplanes, on the helicopters, on the aircrafts in general, they use uh, gyroscopes. That is to see the behavior of the car. Even when you, when you are not braking, it's always seeing if the car is tilting forward, tilting back, left, right, rolling, spinning, all of those things. And when you are braking, the sensor, uh, it, it, there is a sensor on the ABS ESP unit that knows how much you are braking, the force of braking pedal, and it calculates the tilt of the car with the pressure, how much to take out on the rear wheels. So you have a virtual regulator on the back wheels that is why for starters you have uh, smaller discs smaller brakes on the rear of the car even if it is a 4x4 a rear engine a mid engine whatever even uh, every time you brake the weight goes forward you need more brakes on the front less brakes on the back now uh, if you disconnect or if you have a malfunction on the ABS ESP unit you notice that because uh, it actually happened to me on the top of the battery the um, that shit that comes out of the battery corroded my uh, fuses and my ABS stopped working and my rear wheels or my rear brakes when I was braking with a lot of uh, with uh, some force they lock, locked up 
So the regulation for the rear brakes was not there because it is the ABS, the ESP that does that regulation. Now, what the hell is that, uh, <laughs> that gyroscope? It has to be on the center of gravity of the car. In this case, we have the engine on the, on the, the front. We have no, uh, no drive on the back. So the weight of the car is kind of right there next to the handbrake and the gear lever and that's exactly where is the gyroscope it's a little black box that is inside there that that's the box that does all the magic so let's see on diagnosis how can we appreciate all of those uh, values all of those numbers all of that information so we can see uh, in case of a problem, let's see here, with no problem, problems whatsoever, so you have a baseline. Let's see here, how can we find, how can we diagnose properly a malfunction on the uh, ABS ESP system. Just another thing, on the moderner <laughs> ABS systems, you have the TPMS um, adding to this. Uh, on the cars that don't have the sensor on the rim, uh, I already talked about that in, on another video, I'll leave the description here, not to be too, lo too long on this. And also we have the gyroscope, on some cars now, it is inside the ABS ESP unit. It's all one big mess now. <laughs> so let's see it. Okay, ABS ESP, why the, do I say always the two, thi the two things? Uh, nowadays the ABS system is incorporated inside the A ESP. Uh, that is not very important to, to know, it's just a curiosity. Um, the same way the traction control is a program inside the, the um, stability program. What do you want to know about DSP is, even when you are not braking, the ESP can control the trajectory of your car. If you are uh, sliding uncontrollably your car, uh, the, the, the ESP can control, even if you don't press on the brake pedal, can control the tra trajectory of your car. So how does it do that? Imagine this, you are taking a left turn, and now you take the right one, like this, and the car goes forward, instead of uh, taking the, the, corn, the corner. Uh, the car knows the angle of the steering wheel. The car knows the intention of the driver. If the intention of the driver is not verified uh, by the gyroscope, I mean, the gyroscope knows what, what is the, the uh, angle of the car, of the, the body of the car, okay? And uh, it processes on the ESP where does the driver wants to go. If the gyroscope tells the ESP the car is going forward instead of going left or right, the ESP will control the body of the car. And how does it do that? In simple terms, and just to begin, if you want to take a left turn and the, cars, the car goes forward, it will lock up, well, not lock up, but break. <laughs> EBS does not lock up, okay? It will break the left rear wheel in order to pivot the body to the left. It is in this way that the, it, it starts to control the trajectory of the car. The ABS, sorry, the ESP has the ability to individually break whatever wheel it wants in order to correct, correct the trajectory. Don't expect miracles, okay? This system, the ABS ESP systems, uh, need really good tires. If you have a plastic, uh, Chinese, whatever, even the, the best brands out there can uh, many times can. Uh, I don't want to bash uh, on some some tire brands, but it is in fact the case. Some tire brands, even the the upper ones, uh, the the thread can be plastified a lot sooner than expected, and then the car has some strange behaviors. Uh, on the video that I'm doing about the, the faults and the problems about ABS, not this one, I will start with this. 
90% of the problems with EBS, ESP, all this flashing, all this, some, uh, the guard uh, has a strange behavior, uh, always something happening with the, the brakes, 90% uh, of the times it's tires and shock absorbers, the problem, because the car really needs a good traction. Uh, that is why on the beginning of the video I did th those clips uh, showing you what happens when you have low traction. That uh, sandy road was actually to uh, show you if you have a bad tire or bad road, okay, how does the system work? It's always uh, trying to unlock the, the wheels, the four wheels. So inside the ABS ESP unit uh, I'm sorry, this is in Portuguese and I cannot switch it out to English. Um, I did it off camera and I cannot do it, but I can translate it for you. I have here the individual speed for the wheels, one to four, and I can actually drive the car a little bit just to you to see the movement of the wheels, okay? I also have here on the braking pedal, I, I pressing, I'm, I'm pressing now on, Okay, I let go, off. This value here is for the relay, for the valves. It is active, it's, it is ready to, to, to work, okay? Uh, this here is for the pump. Every time you, you use the ABS or the ESP, you have a, a pump to, to take out the pressure of the, the circuit, the circuit that is chosen by the, the ESP unit, okay? These, these are the valves, the, the valves that the, the, uh, the unit can open or close to do the correction of the um, of the car or or activate the, the ABS okay more valves and right now we have the tension of the battery it is very cool 14 volts we have the the sensor the angle of turning of the steering wheel you have here for the right it is a, a negative value on center it is zero if I can find it and for the left it is the same thing but positive okay you have a, a yaw sensor as well inside this steering sensor if you turn the, the steering wheel very rapidly this this machine cannot catch that value because the machine is slow and the the the, the yaws are very quick okay now this is very interesting here pressure on the braking pedal i have zero bars now i, I press it a little bit let's wait three bars a little bit more pressure 13 14 more pressure on the pedal 43 75 and so on the more pressure i put on the brake the more it reads the acceleration of the body the rpms of the engine i have here also somewhere okay the, the second contact for the the braking pedal is it, it is in fact two circuits on one um on just one switch brake pedal switch and uh some more things here that for now i will not will not talk about because it's not it is not relevant okay so this unit really see, sees everything that is to see about braking and stability of the car i hope you like this video i, I hope you can share with your friends consider subscribe to the channel and hit the like button also on the description below there are, uh, there are a lot of information about uh, videos for, for breaks. I have playlists, I have helps for the channel. I have uh, really a lot of, of information. Um, see you next time. Bye.